Let's now discuss charged conductors versus charged insulators. Both of these types of substances can be charged. Let's first talk about charged conductors. In charged conductors, the excess charge always spreads out on the surface until the charged particles are in what we call electrostatic equilibrium. This is when the net electric force on them is zero and also the charges are at rest. So if you have a conductor in which the charges are at rest, we call that electrostatic equilibrium. For uh, example, if a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium is spherical, the charge evenly distributes on the outside surface. So here's an example of how that would work. This is a picture of a solid conductor. In other words, all through here, is this is all solid in there. Uh, it's not hollow, it's a solid conductor. Now, if I could somehow inject some electrons in there, I don't know how I could do that with a wire or somehow put some electrons in there, and this is a conductor, what are those electrons gonna do? Hint, they hate each other. They're gonna try to get as far away from each other as they can, and because this is a conductor, they're like, cool, get me out of here. I wanna get away from these other jerks. They will move out like that. We'd end up with those excess electrons on the outer surface of this thing. And they would be evenly distributed as long as it's a spherical surface. Now, you can have charge present on an interior surface of a hollow conductor. In other words, there's some air space inside, like, uh, for example, right here, uh, in this spot right there, that's a gap where there's some air. You can actually have uh, charges on that inner, inner surface. If I did the same thing and just uh, touched some electrons to this, they would all naturally go to the outside. They hate each other. How could I get some electrons on this inner surface? The only way I could do that is by somehow suspending some positive charges in this hollow area in the gap in the middle here. And how I would do that, I have to set them on, a, on an insulating uh, uh, stand or something and have to get them to be suspended in there. If I could do that, then I can have, again, they're on the surface, but they could be on the inner surface. I could have, uh, with four positive charges, I could have four negative charges on the inner surface of this conductor like that. So that would only happen if I had some charge in this hollow gap somehow. Now, if I have a conductor that is not spherical, uh, it is not evenly distributed. Uh, and we'll find out why this is in our chapter on electric potential. But if you've got on the round part, uh, the electrons distributed like this, they will be much more tightly packed, uh, much more dense on the sharp pointy parts. So in summary, if, uh, if a conductor is not spherical, the surface charge density is what we call it. It's higher where the radius of curvature, so the radius of curvature, very small right there. Uh, in other words, sharp points or corners is where we'd have the highest concentration on the surface of those negative charges. Uh, now, charged insulators, those are something very, very different. And let's take a look at what these look like. If you charge an insulator, for example, if I charge this balloon like this, the charge doesn't spread out on that. The electrons on the balloon are just on one side of it. Where I rubbed my head on it, rubbed my hair on it, that's where those electrons will be. And because this is an insulator, even though these electrons hate each other, they cannot spread out any farther. They are actually tightly bound to the nucleus. So they cannot move. Uh, you can, in fact, have charges inside a solid insulator. I could inject some charge in here, and it would be stuck there. So electrons cannot easily flow through insulators, so wherever you put the charge, that's pretty much where it stays. Um, so charged insulators, charge won't necessarily spread out evenly and excess charge can be on the substance, not on the surface of that. Another very important concept that we have to cover is what is called electrical ground. An electrical ground is an object 
usually a large object and usually a conductor which can accept or donate electrons yet remain relatively neutral. So how is that possible? Well, if you are large enough of an object like the Earth, in fact, that is the best electrical ground, uh, you can accept a bunch of electrons and they're so spread out, it's like putting some red food coloring, a few drops of that in the ocean. When you put red food coloring in the ocean, what color is the ocean? It's still blue. Uh, in other words, you put a bunch of electrons, millions of electrons even, in the Earth, it's still neutral because they spread out so very far apart. And ultimately, uh, they will be neutralized by some ions in the air or whatever. So uh, the Earth is an awesome ground. And even just a large object can be a good ground as well. Um, the verb to ground means to touch an object to a ground or connect it electrically with a conductor. And it will neutralize a charged conductor if no other charges are nearby. Let's take a look at this YouTube video that explains that. If you are wearing a negatively charged shirt, how can you neutralize it? Easy. Simply touch a metal water tap. The excess electrons will transfer from your finger to the tap until a negative charge on your shirt balances the positive charge. The pipe to which the tap is attached runs deep into the ground. This connects to the earth, which is neutral in charge. Because of its vast size, the addition of small amounts of charge, or its removal, does not significantly affect the Earth's overall charge. The process of connecting something to the Earth by means of a conductor is called grounding. So far we have shown what happens when we carry a negative charge. But what happens when we carry a positive charge? Look what happens when we touch the water tap. As usual, there's a spark. This time electrons flow from the Earth into the arm, and in so doing, neutralize or discharge the shirt. Grounding. The process where we connect a charged object to the Earth will discharge that object, whether it is positively charged or negatively charged. So in summary, if you've got a negatively charged object, let's put some excess negative charges around this thing right here, and you ground it or connect it to the Earth, this is the symbol right here uh, for grounding this thing right there that's the symbol for being connected to ground uh, or some ground doesn't have to be the earth but if you ground this simply by connecting this with a wire to this object what happens is these electrons all they hate each other they want to get as far away from each other as they can so they will all jump through this wire and go away from each other and after grounding we will have just a neutral object just like that uh, if you have a positively charged object, let's look at these excess positive charges on here. Um, what happens is when you connect to the ground, now positive charges cannot move. Electrons come up from the ground because the, the ground can act as an acceptor or a donator of electrons. These come up through the ground. The ground's got plenty to spare until this object is neutral. And again, the ground has, is so large, the Earth is so large, that it's got plenty of excess electrons to spare. It will still remain relatively neutral. So after we're done, as long as there's no other charged objects nearby, grounding something will neutralize it if it is a conductor. Now, let's talk about what will happen if you ground an insulator. So here's an insulator right here, and I'm going to again make it uh, negatively charged. So this is before grounding. If I touch this ground to it, let's say I touch it right here, touch that wire to it right there, does the insulator neutralize? Think about that for a minute. Well, if you realize that the electrons cannot move easily through the insulator, you will realize that it will not be neutralized. Now, this one electron right there, it might make it into the ground, but the rest of them will just still be stuck on there. So the rest of these electrons are going to remain on this insulator. Maybe just that one will be uh, taken away by our ground. Let's now talk about the important concept of polarization. Polarization is when negative and positive charges are spatially separated on an object, 
though the object typically remains neutral. Um, so here's an example of a polarized conductor. You see I've brought this negative balloon close to a wall that's a conducting wall, and the electrons are like, get me away from these electrons on that balloon. They actually move over to the right, like so. They actually, the electrons move this way and end up over where they are at the right there. They're, they physically leave the atoms uh, which they were previously hanging around. Now in an insulator, insulators can also be polarized, but what these things right here represent, these represent an atom. And in an insulator, the electrons cannot leave the atom. So what do the electrons do? They actually shift over as far as they can go. They actually, uh, the, the shape of the orbital gets distorted and these electrons over here are hanging out more often on the far right side of those atoms than they are hanging out on the left side. So even uh, insulators can become polarized.